Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Director of Product Development, Will Schick, and joining me today behind the board, brand new, and our fantastic social media person who we've got maybe some sound issues going on, but first time behind the board, so we're just clicking buttons. We're making it, we're making it work. No worries there. With that said, today we're going to be painting up one monstrous Frank Castle, the man, the myth, the legend, Cosmic Ghost Rider. Uh, he's like everything. Herald of Galactus, Spirit of Vengeance, Thanos' left-hand, right-hand person. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Uh, but we're going to just throw some paint on this gigantic fellow and have some fun chat. And I'm going to be using a lot of artist inks today with my painting because, for the most part, the only colors that Cosmic Ghost Rider has going on are going to be all of his glowy bits. Um, so we're just going to keep going with all the stuff. Hit all the buttons, it'll be fine. All right, and then Summer is gonna adjust the camera, I think, because it looks like we're definitely not on based on where we are here. What did you do? Did you I didn't do anything. You totally did. I think you did it, <laughs> because I have not moved from this spot. Um, so the first thing you'll probably notice, which is likely new information to most people, is the fact that his little energy ball on the end of his bike is clear, so we, I have one of the frames here. So this was another opportunity that we had in the engineering and manufacturing stage to kind of do some clear plastics. Um, so you do have the energy ball that's clear. You can either paint it obviously like normal or where you can use uh, inks and glazes and washes to make it translucent. We're gonna try some of that today. And then the other big thing is that there's two heads for this, this fine Cosmic Ghost Rider. You have the head that's got the flames coming off of it. So you can have them unhelmeted or you can use this little clear dome here. And there's a head for that, and you can plop that little dome on him once you're done painting him. And then you'll have the little Spaceman helmet bubble as well. So, with that said, let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right, the big things here is Cosmic Ghost Rider. He is black on black on black, and then he's got a lot of glows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by using some black uh, Scale 75 black metal. I'm going to use some Artist Inks. And this is going to be some black artist inks. I'm going to mix some of this black ink in to my metallic. And this is just going to really darken it up because we want our Cosmic Ghost Rider to have that nice kettle black kind of look. And using inks this way to tint your, well, any of your colors, but especially your metals, works really, really well. The other option that we could have done on this is I could have... Uh, painted him with the flat black metal, and then we could have done a bunch of washes and glazes. That would take a little longer. It would give me a lot more control, though. So it's, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of a dealer's choice in terms of how you want to um, spend your time and everything. But we're going to go this way today because it's just going to be a little quicker. And normally what I'd say for this fine fellow is uh, if I wasn't doing them on the stream... I would not have glued the ball onto the bike yet, and I would just paint the bike completely separate from the ball. And that would give me more flexibility to be a little sloppier and not worry about getting some of my darker paints on the clear plastic. Um, additionally, you know, he's going to have a little bit of a wiggle because of how his flying bicycle, his cosmic motorcycle works. And that's fine. He's very, very secure. Um, but... Again, you could eliminate that wiggle if you didn't want to work around it while well, you were painting and trying to do some more fine detail stuff by just not gluing him onto the ball until the very end. Similar with uh, other clear plastics, like, for example, if you watch Dallas Kemp do Arnim Zola and how you kind of approach using or painting him so that the TV screen is clear and you can see his face uh, and the interior of the chest, or you know, even doing one of the first miniatures that we ever did with the clear plastic, which was Wasp. Um, and her wings, keeping the wings off until you're ready to kind of put them on. All that stuff. This is definitely one of the few miniatures um, that I would ever say is 100% designed to be painted in sub-assembly. So, and it's really, you know, you can leave, you could leave Cosmic Ghost Rider off the bike if you really wanted to. I don't think that's necessary at all. Um, but it is an option if you wanted to get really into it. Overall, though, the two big parts are... Don't glue the ball together. It snaps together in two halves. So I would leave the ball off, paint all of Cosmic Ghost Rider. Once I was done completely with the bike and Cosmic Ghost Rider, glue the ball on, and from there, tint the ball. Um, 
using the airbrush or using the brush or whatever. And that'll let you do your OSL, your object source lighting, if you wanted to. It means that you're not going to have to work around any of the other elements. So, however, on stream, we like to have these miniatures kind of fully assembled so everyone can see what they look like and um, have a good idea of what's going on with them. So I assembled them and I will work around it. If you want to fully assemble them and do it this way, there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to work just fine. Like I said, you're just going to have to kind of like know that you're going to deal with a little bit of the wiggle um, because you're going to put a lot more pressure on him than he's normally going to have during gameplay or anything like that because you have to push with the brush a little bit even with really smooth flowing paints like we have here. I'm still, you know, smacking him around with this brush, so. Chaboop. Oh yeah, LED lighting, that'd be really sick. Um, that kind of wiring and stuff is beyond my, beyond my hobby skill, but I have no doubt that folks will light this boy up, give him that nice cosmic glow that he so truly deserves. We're just gonna fake it with some, uh, with some colors today. And when we're talking about painting, you know, if you want to paint over the clear plastic and just do the, do the glow effects normally, obviously you just prime, prime the whole mini um, like you normally would. Easy peasy, no problems. If you do want to do kind of what we're going to do today and do some of the translucents um, and do the color tinting and everything, then one of the big things that you'll probably want to do is go ahead and hit the plastic with a little clear coat. Um, so some kind of like matte varnish or a satin varnish, or even if you wanna keep the shine on a gloss varnish. But the reason that you want that varnish on is because it'll act like a primer layer. It gives, it gives that necessary tooth for the paint to really stick well. Um, I learned this when I was doing the wasp wings. I did several of them. And what I found was is if I didn't actually go through the steps of uh, hitting the wasp, the clear plastic with a little bit of clear coat, um, the paint glaze didn't stick very well. Now with something like Arnim Zola and his chest piece, if you want that to be completely crystal clear, then you don't have to do that step, right? You just wanna have it be completely clear so you can see under it. However, cause we wanna put some color on that energy ball, um, that's gonna require us to put some paint on it. And I found personally that hitting it with a little bit of that matte sealant to give it kind of a fake primer layer makes a huge difference in terms of just getting the paint to do what you want, having it flow properly, having it adhere properly. Um, so that's my big kind of note there. You can try it uh, either way. Obviously the only kind of like downside to having to hit it with a clear coat if you only have a matte coat, it's going to become less less shiny. Um, it will dull it a little bit, so it won't be quite as clear, but because you'll be putting color on it, that's really not a big deal. So, because you're going to be taking away some of the transparency anyway with your, with your glazes and your washes. But in the end, you can make it work however you want. Uh, you're not required to do it any way but the way that works for you. And like I said, I can tell you the way that I found it worked best for me, but that doesn't mean that it's the only way to do it or even the best way to do it. Everyone's kind of going to find their own technique and their own style. Um, we talked a little bit about the fact that yes, in the Marvel 616, this version of the Punisher is from an alternate timeline than the normal Punisher, and that's where you get the one of my favorite comic runs um, because it made me laugh <laughs> a lot. Was uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys the Marvel Universe, where he kind of at the end of his big baby Thanos adventure gets thrust way back into time and then has to hang out. And he gets to go through basically all of the big Marvel seminal events. And uh, instead of it going the way that it was supposed to in that arc, we get to see what would have happened if, you know, the very clearly insane and unstable Cosmic Ghost Rider had been around as well. Um, 
the point where he's with the Fantastic Four fighting the Moloids might have been the part where I had to put the book down and because I was laughing so hard. So if you haven't read it, Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys the Marvel Universe, or Marvel History, it's Marvel History. Um, because there's Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe, and I think it's Cosmic Ghost Rider destroys Marvel history. I think. Um, now I'm all second guessing myself, so here we go. But anyway, that was a super fun run. And really great. So if you want a good laugh, uh, as well as kind of a, a tongue in cheek stroll down Marvel's big moments of history um all the kind of seminal events the who's who of major touchstones i would recommend that run it was real great it was fantastic So now we've got these colors on. And you notice I'm specifically avoiding the chains because the chains are just going to be flaming. They're going to be on fire. So I don't really want to hit them with anything dark. I am trying to avoid any place where I think I'm going to want to hit my glows, though. So the head, obviously the cosmic bands around his wrists and around the cycle, the um, bike's like front headlight, the flames on the back, all these, all these elements are things that I ideally um, want to be able to go through and start hitting with glows and stuff. So, And I think because we have a lot of glows to do, what I'm going to do is I'm kind of going to shortcut just painting the rest of the black metal. So because I can go back and do that whenever. Um, and instead, we'll kind of jump into doing some of the glow effects and everything so that we have enough time to get it done. All right, so let's go ahead and start with the blues, I guess. Um, yeah, sure. So for the little bands, and because we're going to do this all at once, yeah. The helmet's right here. I'm, I'm actually painting the helmet version. So there's the there's the helmet. This is the this is the head. Helmet just pops on top when you're done. Um, obviously, don't assemble him with the helmet on, or otherwise you're never going to see your Ghost Rider's face, unless you want to get really good at freehand painting. And that sounds challenging and unnecessary to me. You're going to want to do exactly what I've done here, which is just complete the whole miniature. And then once you're done, you get to cap off your work. By putting on his little bubble helmet. Um, and then of course, if you're not going to use the bubble helmet, you just put the head on normally and Paint it up and you'll have a nice little flame trail and maybe your version doesn't have the helmet. I don't know. I really like the look with the helmet on and so it was um, it was fun that we were able to do some of those elements with the clear plastic and between the bikes like energy ball tire thing front and uh, the astronaut dome. We kind of had enough things going on that doing the extra clear plastic for him made sense. I don't want you there. I do kind of want you in that area, though. So hit these things really quick. This and this. Um, all I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of going through and setting up some Arctic blue for the places where I want add my my blue glow now obviously this is important for any of the spots that i um covered with black because my blue glow is not going to show well over the black metallic but also 
even the places that I left white, you know, going back over and doing kind of this undertone is going to give us that foundation that our glaze will need, our little ink glaze will need. Oh, it's fine. We're just going to cheat this anyway. That's like behind his leg. No one will ever see it. Um, it gives us kind of that nice undertone that because it's a blue white, it'll work well with our blue glaze. If I was doing say a red um, or a yellow or an orange, I might choose, I might look for like a yellow white, a more egg shelly white. Um, Cause I want something that's gonna have, I want a white that has a little bit of the color that I'm gonna use for my primary glow. It just makes the effect a little easier. Um, it means that I don't have to worry about the transparency tinting in a way that I don't want. So for example, if I used like a green, or that's a bad example, if I used like a yellow, and then I put the blue over it, all of a sudden I might wind up with a green glow because of the yellow tint of my base is obviously gonna mix with the transparency of the blue and it's gonna make green. So you do wanna think about your color theory a little bit or your color mixing. Um, and use that to your advantage. Now that's also a really great way to get cool results using transparencies. Like for example, I'm gonna do the um, chains, chains of cider rack with yellow first. And then, oh, we got an ant in here. Something's happening. Um, I'm going to use a yellow first, and then I'm going to use my red to go over it, and that yellow and red is going to help make some mid-tones of orange without having to, like, do a lot of work. Now there's a summer in here. I am overwhelmed. There's so many folks in here. Too much. Okay. <laughs> Bye, friends! I assume I was a little out of focus because this boy has a big old back end with his bike. And so when I turn him so that I can paint him, he juts out towards the camera in a way the camera probably doesn't like. It's just why Summer has to stay here and be the camera lady. The camera person. told you. It's just going to keep happening. He's too big. He won't be stopped. He's got that cosmic badonk. He does. His bike, his bike is serious. It's a super serious bike. All right. and I just want to get some glow in here and I don't mind if I slop it over because that'll just give us a little bit of fake OSL to work with. This one, and we kind of do the same thing. All right, that's probably good enough. One of the great things about all this is that we can be a bit messy. We can also go back and easily clean up stuff because we're doing lights over darks and all that good stuff. Oh, I forgot his little, his little cosmic wristbands. We better do that. That's how you get in all the sick space parties. You know, have those power cosmic bands, and you're like, look, bro, I'm in. I'm like, my gosh, you have the power cosmic? And then everyone in the club's like, I have the power cosmic. Because literally everyone's had the power cosmic. Except the wall. He never had it. Although, I don't know if you all know this, but one of the wall's particularly powerful abilities is that he is faster than an average wall. 
And you might be like, well, that's just silly. And I'd be like, you might be right, but that is officially listed in his power set. That he is faster than the average wall. Kind of like how Summer is cleverer than the average bear. Okay, and then we're just going to go through. Uh, I don't know if, like, Frank does, but Cosmic Ghost Rider definitely does. I think that's one of my favorite parts about this character is just how he's got a bit of that, like, classic Frank Castle in him, but he's also so insane that he's radically different uh, and I think the way that they kind of like made that play out and they handled it in the more tongue-in-cheek style storytelling that they did and everything but still giving him that good old Punisher trauma um, was pretty cool I really liked it I think he's just like right on that proper level of lunacy He's not quite, you know, full throttle She-Hulk or Deadpool breaking the fourth wall and She-Hulk threatening to come to your house and rip up your X-Men comics or, you know, Deadpool and Baby Cable going through the wild multiverse. But there's still plenty of, like, tongue-in-cheek zaniness that feels very at place. Like, for example, why wouldn't you go back in time and, you know, kill baby Thanos? But then you get there and you realize, I can't do that. Look at him, he's so cute. And so then what do you do? You've already gone, gone back in time, so you got to take him with you. Then you wind up at a cosmic bar, lamenting the fact that you don't know what to do with your baby Thanos. And through no fault of your own as you continue to deal with people trying to get in your way to stop Thanos being Thanos, you wind up murdering all of them and teaching baby Thanos the value of being, you know, a crazed, violent murder dictator. It's tough. No good deed goes unpunished, as they say. But... The way that arc ends with uh, him confronting Thanos, and I loved that moment. And I won't spoil it for anyone who hasn't read the run, but if you hadn't read, haven't read the run, go read Cosmic Ghost Rider. It's only like six issues, I think. There's gigantic space sharks in it for like two seconds, but still. Uh, tactic cards that are included in the box. There is a tactic card that revolves around him working with the Black Order. I know. I said it. Summer did a big old, like, gasp. Because she didn't know. She doesn't read the memos. Summer doesn't read the memos. We got her to come to playtest like two or three times, I think, and then she stopped coming. I did wait to get Maggie for freshman year all the time. You, you, did, you did have a nasty habit of beating everyone. <laughs> but, I just want to say for the record, I did have to tell Dallas that uh, CGR was really bad for Did we have to tell Dallas that CGR was in the Defenders? I did. Oh my gosh. There was a receipt? I'm not entirely sure what that means, but I'm intrigued. That's what the kids say. That's, is it? I thought the kids talked about tea. Well, yeah. To be fair, I have children, and all my children talk about are bros. Like, everything's a bro. What up, bro? I don't know, bro.
All right, so we're gonna take a little bit of this weird blue ink and some turquoise ink. I feel like that blue ink that I just got from Tony's stash is not very good. It's chunky, why is it chunky? <sighs> Tony, you gotta take better care of your things, man. We're gonna have a talk when he gets back. That'll work. This'll be fine. I believe in it. Uh, normally I would add some glazed medium, but some monster has run away with all my medium from this place, so we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna use some water. However, but wait. One of the great things about artist inks, um, as opposed to kind of the more hobby-centric inks, is that they're kind of, they're, they're, they have more stick to them. They're kind of a mix in between, so let's see how this works. So that's too thin, so that's okay. So we're just gonna play until we find the right, until we find the right mix. Boop, boop. Until we find the right mix of stick. And this is probably the most important part when you're doing like painting with transparencies and stuff and glazes is that you really wanna find that right ratio of transparency to opacity and make sure that it sticks properly and everything. So we'll see. We might just have to go pure ink on that. Or, as we discussed, the ball might not have gotten enough clear coat, which means that we'll have some problem getting that stuff to stick. But We'll play around with it, we'll figure it out. Okay, so we're just gonna start tinting all this stuff. And I can see that. We might need to grab, let's see. Not that color. Mm. So if your glazes aren't sticking super well, that'll work. One of the tricks you can do is if you don't have any mixing medium, you can take a bit of paint in the same color range as your kind of glaze and mix that in there, and that'll give it a bit more stick. So let's see how that works. Oh yeah, look at that. See, so you can kind of see the night and day difference here with how adding just a little bit of that turquoise paint into our wash, our little ink glaze, really gave us that stick that we were missing with just the inks themselves. So probably used a little bit too much water on my end. So I was really concerned with making them nice and smooth and thin. Of course, the other big part to this is that uh, you shouldn't expect your glazes to go in one kind of one fell swoop. So apply them, let them dry, come back, apply them again. You're going to build those transparent layers a few times. Uh, you can use an airbrush for this. It works really well. Uh, it takes a lot of control on these smaller areas, like I would never be able to do these little buttons with my airbrush. Um, however, you can use that overspray that you'll probably get from the airbrush if you are not insanely well practiced like I am as kind of your fake OSL. And because we're doing this over black metal, um, your overspray is not going to show up as much either. So you do have... Um, options and a little bit of leniency when it comes to how everything like turns out here. And you can stop at whatever level of glazing that you feel like looks correct to you or you can keep going um, and once the glaze is dried go back and do some highlighting again so you can come in and mess around with your highlights. One of the tricky things about, you know, glowing elements is typically the hottest zone is on the interior. Um, so 
if you're going to play with you know kind of how light naturally works then the inside of the element is going to be white and the exterior the further away you get from the source is going to be darker so you want to think about that you can use references um, to kind of play with it but because we can kind of assume that each of these little rings is glowing that mostly means that I would come back and really easily just edge highlight the interior of each ring. And that would make it go. Heralds of Galactus faction, well, that would require a Galactus though, I think. It'd be weird to have the Heralds and no Galactus. But yeah. So you can see how, because I'm using this translucent wash, wherever I kind of slopped over paint, like right here and stuff, it's kind of naturally becomes a little bit of like, I call it, I call it lazy man's OSL, but really I'm not being lazy. I'm just using, I'm just using the techniques to my advantage and not sweating the small stuff. A very famously known artist would have called these happy little accidents. I prefer the Dallas Kemp statement of, you know, miniatures painting or painting in general is just the fine art of fixing one's mistakes. So I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to go back and I'm going to fix them. Sometimes that means working within the mistake because it works to my advantage. Sometimes it means going back and just adjusting whatever happened so that I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to let that kind of dry because we hit all those areas. And then we'll move on to our not blue glows. Oh, hands back. It's too long. He is. He's a long boy, and he's gonna keep, you know, being long. You can't, you can't stop him. You can't stop him from being the ghost rider that he is. So I'm just going through with purity white, um, and just really kind of doing an overbrush, a pretty thick overbrush here, just to amp up the brightness because I want these areas that we're gonna go over next to be really hot. Temperature wise, temperature wise. I'll leave the attractiveness value up to the eye of the beholder, but I don't want these chains to be smoking fiery hot. So the brighter that I make that undercoat, the more our glazes and Transparencies will show and then this is another trick where for instance if you wanted to take your time and, and be very aware of how glows will work you could spend a decent amount of time making sure that the brightest or the whitest areas of your undercoating or the interior areas so that they would show the yellows and everything the best. Um, and then kind of knock it out in one, or you could do kind of what I think is the easier way, um, which is you just hit everything with your white, get it to the point to where it's bright as you want. And then you can use a dry brush or an overbrush with darker colors to go over the top of it. And if you apply a careful dry brush or overbrush with darker colors, you can build up the cool parts on the exterior where the color would dull the most. Because again, remember for natural lighting things, your hottest source is at the center. And then the further away you get from that, the darker the color becomes. Uh, and you can just build that up by using overbrushing because the overbrush is only going to catch the exterior areas. So you come back through with like a like kind of a nice crimson or a red black and you can start to create that cooling effect on the chain 
and get more of that magma feel. Ah. Yeah, OSL, I mean, I am far from an expert at it. Um, and there's lots of ways to approach it, but kind of my my approach for it has always been based off of just kind of wanting to get decent results fairly quickly. Uh, and I don't really sweat a lot of the compositional or really technical aspects of it. I just want it to look, you know, glowy enough. You're like, that looks like fire. That looks like whatever. And to be fair, like for a long time, I didn't really put together the whole hotter at the source, colder at the outskirts thing. So I'd always want the hottest part to be on the exterior and my fire always looked wrong. And I was like, why does it look so weird? And then eventually I figured out, hey, all these smart, all these smart people keep talking about it and the hot spot needs to be close to the source and then it needs to get darker the further away you go. And one of the really interesting things is, is the darker you make the exterior, the more contrast you have between the outer edges and the inner edges, the hotter the source will look. So that can be a really key technique for Yeah, all the glowy bits on the hydro tank for sure. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more, one more pass on my blue so that white can have a moment to dry. And then we'll go back through and, so like here I just wanna like even out some of my, some of my glow here. You're back again. Just don't leave, man. Just don't leave. Just hang out. You might as well. You keep going and then you have to come right back. You can just chill. You can just watch. Chill out. I'm not nervous. I won't freak out. That's what you say. I know. At any point. <laughs> At any point, I could just lose it. Yeah. I just snap. Start throwing artist inks on the wall. <laughs> Like, you don't understand the pressures I'm under. This cosmic ghostwriter has to be perfect in an hour. <laughs> he has a party. He hasn't seen Thanos in an entire alternate universe. He can't meet his previous boss looking like crap. He's got to prove that he's been better. Why not? We'll just do some quick wet blending. <gasps> Cause I like wet to wet blend. You, sir, we're not supposed to do that. So we're gonna blend you out. Here we can just run that out a little bit. The other fun thing you can do with working with inks like this is you can actually put them on and then you can pull them off with a dry, with a clean, not a dry, a clean, slightly damp brush and you can just peel them right off. <gasps> oh no, I've used all of my little trays. Man, what monster just keeps using trays with never cleaning them? That guy, that guy's a problem. A total problem, but look, I found a clean one. Don't worry, Summer, I found a clean one. It's all good. It's... Where am I supposed to put them? I don't know. Maybe I'll 
Sounds like a great job for someone who's not me. So we're just going to start with our yellows because again, hottest color. Oop. And for the most part this time, I'm just taking it straight out. I didn't add any water to it because I felt like it was a mistake to do so with the blue. And also, I don't really need any of the white to particularly show through like I kind of wanted with the blue energy effects. So, be fine. I may take just a touch of water, just so it'll flow a little better. There we go. Just gonna knock this out. Yeah, well, I mean, I would take credit for the yellow to the blue, but honestly, I'm just following the geniuses who created Cosmic Ghost Rider's color scheme. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do the yellow orange. Really, it's a very vibrant orange on the chains to mimic, you know, molten hot metal. Um, but we could leave them as yellow and just have, you know, the nice little turquoise to yellow combo. Boop. Now, one of the techniques that I would be interested to get reports back on if anybody wants to try it, I don't think Dallas Kemp has done this yet, but it was something he and I talked about, is you could take the uh, little energy ball or the space dome uh, for Cosmic Ghost Rider, and instead of painting the exterior, you could actually pour paint on the interior and roll it around. Uh, and just create kind of a tint on the inside. And I th think maybe he did something similar to that on his Zola, where he tinted with a little bit of glaze um, the interior of the TV panel. I've definitely seen folks do that in their awesome paint jobs on like the Facebook group and stuff. Um, but it's definitely something you could do here, just spin the ball around and have the paint on the inside instead of the outside, and that could be pretty cool. Flame going on. Wow, he's so hot. Cosmic Ghost Rider, he's so hot right now. flame and then I guess with our orange ink because I didn't grab a red ink I don't know what I was thinking I should probably just think an orange know if that would work like I want. What? Oh, he's tipping over. Look at him fall. There we go. A little intense crimson as well. Okay. Let's just start mixing in some of these colors. Let's grab our orange and then starting about the midway point. Just start pulling back. let those colors kind of like blend together 
right at the edge of where we want them. Don't want a lot of yellow showing, just a little bit of yellow towards the edge, and I can kind of blend those more if I want, or blend them less. So when you're doing stuff like, especially with glazing, or like really thin paints, if you want to concentrate, pull the brush towards where you want the color to concentrate. So if I want the orange to be strongest at the back of the flame, I pull my brush this way. If I want my orange to be strongest towards, you know, closer to the bike, I pull my orange this way. Um, so you can work the you can work the colors back and forth, sort of, um, to determine kind of where where the heavy stuff is, and that's a really great way to make sure that you're kind of getting the color build up and the saturation you want where you want it. So I don't want a lot of my orange here, so I started kind of where I thought I wanted to start, and then I would pull my brush this way. And if I keep pulling this way, I'll just, the lightest amount of color will be here, and the strongest amount of color, because it'll pool, will be back here. And of course, I can continue to build up color in that area as well. But it's one of the really cool things about using thin paints or glazing, and you can do this with everything. Um, it's a really great way to paint faces if you've ever struggle with painting like skin tones and stuff. Instead of trying to do edge highlighting or really harsh highlighting, you can instead use glazes and you simply pull the paint to where you want it to be strongest. So, you know, if we're doing cheekbones or kind of contouring and everything, you can just pull the paint where you want it to Cool. And you can work it back and forth a little bit too. So, you know, I can pull into the skull, I can pull back out of the skull, I can go all across the skull if I want to, a lighter color, and I can pull away color, then I'll get it in that orange into the darker recess or the lighter recess. So I have a lot of control comes to how this color pulls together and, you know flames and fire and glow or they have rules that apply to them but they're also organic and kind of finicky gimmicky things you know they move flame flickers so it's not always strongest in the exact same spots it has a little bit of a mind of its own so just play with the paints kind of work with them and you know think about what you want to do and the great thing about especially stuff like this is you do have a lot of working time with it you can really play around with it and if you've been around with me for the last few weeks I've been doing a lot of um, oil painting on stream we've talked a lot of, a lot of the benefits for that and this is definitely one of those things where we're effectively what I'm trying to do here with my inks and my my oils or my inks here and my transparencies and all that is I'm trying to emulate what I could get with oils you know blending the colors on the miniature itself um, and so really if if it was something that you were interested in trying and you got it this would be a really great doing these kind of glowing effects would be a really great way to experiment and play with the foundational properties of oil paints because you have so much control over the wet blend and so much time you know you can wet blend with acrylics but it requires a lot of medium and you really have to watch how dry your paints are getting and how they're mixing and there's a lot of brush cleaning that goes in between and that affects your time so you have to be a little quick with it. You got to be very confident in kind of your movements and your brush strokes and where you're applying paints and everything when it comes to wet blending with acrylic and that's just not the case with oil paints. You have literally days, days and it's amazing. 
Um, so you can work an area over and over and over, and if it turns out that you just hate everything you've done, you can just wipe it all off with a makeup sponge or a clean brush or whatever. Um, and that practice will obviously make you a little more confident when it comes to wet blending with acrylics, and so it can be a good way to, to teach yourself and train yourself. You can also, you know, just continue to play and work acrylics back and forth with wet blending and all of that good stuff. And eventually you'll hit that right point. The saddest part with wet blending acrylics though is it often becomes so entertaining and fun that you keep at it way past when you should. And you're like, this looks great. I'm going to push it a little bit more. And then you're like, oh no, I've ruined it. And then going backwards is tricky. So it's a bit more work. Whereas with oils going backwards, it's pretty easy because you can just blend it. You have a lot more freedom to blend it away. All right. What's, oh, I forgot. I totally forgot to get the blaster. The Hellfire blaster needs, needs its color. Now you see I just have multiple colors going on the brush, so I'm getting yellow and red, or yellow and orange at the same time. I'm extra cheating here. It's great. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes being sloppy works to your advantage. But again, even if I didn't like what happened there, I could easily go back in and fix it, right? Like, there's nothing that we can't, that we can't undo comes to this stuff. The only thing that's really hard to fix is if you get your paints to be too thick. And if you paint with too thick a paint, it becomes really hard because at that point, you're kind of at a spot where you need to pull the paint off and you can't remove paint, so goes back a little bit to, so now I'm just going to add that hot, that coldness. So I'm using red, which, you know, we kind of think of as a hot color, but it's actually colder than yellow and orange. So I can use the red to kind of mix in on those edges, and that'll make my overall chains their interiors feel hotter and then let's just say I come in here and I'm like I want this area to be warmer so I can just grab some yellow I can mix that yellow in there maybe pull it back and that and I could do this after it dries too you know I don't have to only use inks but the more yellow I add to the interior of that flame, the hotter it's going to look. And if I want to get really crazy, I can come over to my white. And I can mix a bunch of white together with my yellow. It's just, this flame is just, it's scorching, right? So I'll just add a little bit of little heat dots in there. And now that flame looks real hot. Um, and you can do that with anything, right? So like our blue down here, the more white we add into the center, the hotter it'll look, all of that kind of stuff. And I really need that red ink to be very, very thin because I don't want it to take over the world. I just want it to kind of hit the top. And I'm using the ink, again, as we talked about, the other option or opportunity I would have here would be to not use the ink, um, but instead to do a dry brush or an overbrush of like a dark crimson. We can do that as well, but I'm just kind of enjoying working with the inks and letting them blend a little bit together on the, the miniature, and so that's how we're going to do it. So you can see like there's more yellow on this back change, so this back change just naturally looks hotter. Like that's where the heat source is. Uh, maybe you like that, maybe you don't. If you don't, then we know how to fix it. And the way to fix it is to just pull back more of the yellow. 
and add more of those quote unquote cooler colors like our red, you know, our red and our orange and everything else. But we want those flame ends to be a bit more red and I'll come around. And there's the benefit of hard plastic. You can catch it with your brush, pull on it, and it'll just spring right back into place. It's beautiful. That's the other thing too is you know you can mix your red and your yellow you can wet blend a little bit and the nice thing is, is that red and yellow make orange so because we have that mid layer of orange we can really quickly kind of reclaim areas where we went too red or we lost our mid-tone a little bit we can get really thick like that we just kind of mix it blend it away uh, no, this is a 65 mil base. So just like, just like Johnny Blaze, he's on, he's on a nice big base. And this is the point where you can like go forever. You know, you can take your yellow ink and work it into all of the little interior crevices of the chain. You can work it more back towards the center where you think it's hotter. You know, maybe the chain starts hot where his torso is and cools as it goes out. Um, it's really up to you how you want the effect to work and how you want it to look. But there's no wrong way to do it. You can play with it until you're very content with the effects that you've got and the heat that you've got. I'm going to take some of my red and just come back here and pull this in to cool off our little jet. Here, see this is the tough part because I'm on camera, but I'll just go cross-armed. So you can see again, start with that thin paint, start with one area and pull it towards the end and then that's where it'll pull. So all my paint is gonna, is gonna pull at the tips of those little flame projections, so that's where it's gonna be darkest or strongest. If I can get further in, back to my orange and maybe I say oh I want a, want a bit more orange over here that's fine we can we can add more orange we can add more orange we can do whatever we want when it comes to this and then maybe we get to it and I'm like ah oh, this feels pretty good but I need that I need that exhaust or that little blaster that jet engine to be super hot right where it starts lots of power right there so just mix in my white and my yellow come back here and I pull it in mix it around maybe I noticed that I missed the underside of the engine no one will ever see that part but hey I can fix it right now Pull it in, make it nice and hot, come back here, grab some orange, pull it together, tie those colors in. Beautiful. Maybe this isn't enough. And then I gotta get a little red going on on my Ghost Rider head here. So we'll just kind of like. Slap it around. And we'll pull this way. You guys don't have to whisper. She was asking how long until you're done. <gasps> first of all. First of all. That was not how I said it. I said. First of all. You tell me. The time. You just, you just have to, you have to sing a song. You have to sing the it's time to be done song. Well, it is true. 
See, look. The end. <laughs> Beautiful. I loved it. I loved everything about it. And I look forward to working with someone who wants to work with me, unlike Summer, who was just mean. <laughs> All right. So it is time to wrap up. I actually think you're going to miss me. But you're going to still be here. You're not going. You're not going anywhere. Don't. Don't pretend like you're just going to disappear. You're going to miss me. You're going to be here all the time. <laughs> You'd be like, what are, you, what are you painting today, Schick? What do you got going on? What are you doing, Dallas? I'll, I'll focus the camera. You need somebody to focus the camera? I'll focus the camera for you. I'd happily focus. I'd love to focus the camera for you. Please let me focus the camera. All right. There we go. Boom. So we got really far on most of our glow effects. There's still some stuff that I want to do to kind of like finish them off. Um, but this is a very hot, hot, hot looking Ghost Rider. No, no oils today. We used, uh, mostly we used artist inks. So I used a black, a turquoise, a blue, an orange, a yellow. I used uh, some Scale 75 Crimson ink because I forgot my um, red artist ink. And then we used, what colors did we use? Uh, some Purity White and some black metal just to lay down our base coats on, on everything. Um, the blues, I'd still go back if I had more time and my mean, mean producers weren't telling me to get off. Um, we'd go back through and, you know, we'd start doing stuff like this. Let's see, watch, see if they catch me. Can they figure it out? I don't think they can. Just... So you just start adding like these little effects here. And you're like knocking. Oh, they're coming to the door. Summer's gonna, Summer's gonna physically hurt me here in a second. <laughs> she knows, she knows and might not know though. I bet we could get away with it. So anyway, like we talked about, you just want to add that. You want to add those hot spots of glow on the interiors of those little cosmic bracelets. And you'd keep up like that, and you could push that as far as you wanted. Like maybe right here. Add that little hot spot. Remember, the brighter it is, the hotter it's going to read. So, you know, we can like do little things like that. Come in here and just think about, think about how you want that stuff to work. Or maybe over here, just get the toppy tips of those. And it's amazing how when you add this little edge highlight, hopefully that's coming through, you just clean everything up. So you can see how now it looks more like there's a glow. And all of our little sloppy mistakes on the side here now feel like they're more OSLE. So we just have some light spillover from those glowing rims and wheels. And we're just basically establishing, reestablishing our stuff. So. All right, I will stop being a pill. Oh, you put the dome on. Put the dome on? Put the dome on? Uh... All right, well, the dome's going to have a little bit of, like, smoots on it because um, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for this. So I think the dome goes, oh, there we go. There we go. There's the dome. So yeah, so one of the things you could do is just take a little bit of orange, like a really thin orange ink, and just kind of roll it around in there, and then it'll even look like it's being lit from the interior. So there you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I hope you maybe learned something or inspired to try something out on your Cosmic Ghost Rider or any of the miniatures you have that you want to make flaming hot or glowy McGlowertons. Uh, until next time, I will see you next Tuesday. Be sure to join us again tomorrow, Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific, as Dallas Kemp is going to be here painting something. I don't know what. I didn't look at the schedule. He's going to be painting something. Don't miss it. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, be good to each other. I always appreciate you hanging out. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.